don't know if that means anything. Okay, yeah, Chris Red. Yeah, the, Chris the, the, Red the allegedly and allegedly uh-huh. I'm saying allegedly, I believe <laughs> Finally, my legal training has taken course on not takers. <laughs> allegedly, yeah. I believe that he might have got put the smoke out of him on him from Keenan. Not oh. you say that's why he got knocked out in front of the comedy Oh, cellar? you know he got knocked out, right? He got his I did. Know, I yeah, did. okay. Yeah. So So I was actually around the corner when it when it happened, but <laughs> it was But for a dude to get out of a car. Wait a minute, Dante, dude, you just implicated yourself into this crime, by the way. Yeah, investigation. Man, yeah, man. See, you're not you following. I was around the training. corner. I was around the corner. He when he told his story, it was different than what he was like, Yeah, you know, I box. So like I I got hit and I didn't go down. But I, you know, and then I like I but it was bleeding in my eye and I couldn't see. So I couldn't see. Like he, when you read the story. It's way like I heard he said it was two uh it was two guys with a noose and a MAGA hat. Uh, <laughs> that's what I heard. Uh, and then I he said he yet. fought Not back. Then he fought back. <laughs> hey, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? Uh on this week's episode we have Jace the pickup scientist, and he is here as we discuss if there is even a bro code anymore. Does that exist? We talk a little bit of gossip about uh, Pete Davidson, Kanye West, uh, Chris Red, and Keenan Thompson, and it, just various examples of the guy code gone wrong, and uh, why you why people go after people's wives. I don't know why people do that. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the show. I'm glad you guys are with us uh, here on Man School 202. And you know, if you want to keep supporting the show, one of the best ways to do that is to go over to Patreon, Patreon.com/ManSchool202. That's where we do all the bonus content, and uh, you can support the show, and you can get extra content, including uh, listener mail, exclusive questions that we answer, and uh, and the bonus show, like this week's bonus show, we continue our conversation with Jace, the pickup scientist, as we discuss why you need to have a father figure in your life, uh, not letting your emotions lead you, and why body count doesn't really matter. And also, uh, if you want to support us, uh, Dante and I do consultations. If you want to reach Dante, you can go to uh, DanteNero.com slash consult. And if you want to come to me, you can uh, email me at Harry, uh, advice from Harry at gmail.com. So uh, otherwise, enjoy the show, everybody. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. And I know I've said that a thousand times before, but this time I mean it. We got, um, uh, first of all, before I say go anyway, how's my boy? How's my motherfucker? I'm, I'm, good, baby? I'm, I'm living a good life, my friend. Living a good life one day at a time. But each day, man, I'm having such a tough time keeping these gators down. It's hard, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've had I guess a couple of dudes I, I was running from my block that I helped out. And when I asked him, how you doing? He goes, what the fuck you asking me that for? How dare you ask you know me how, that? You know you're how great. I'm good. <laughs> Kind of I'm great. Is that to ask I, don't even, me. I feel like you're being disrespectful. He you're being sarcastic. Like, just you must asking. be being sarcastic. Well, let's or, let's introduce our guest, yo, dog, uh, friend of the show, friend, friend of the show, fan of the, the philosophy. Give it up for Jace, yo. Give it up, Jace. Jace. Yep. Pick yo, up yo. scientist. Hey, what's going on, man? Good to have you back on. Last time you were here, I called the Pete Davidson, uh, the Pete breakup. Davidson breakup. That's uh, right. On air, I mean, was like no surprise, right? No surprise. No the, surprise. No surprise. Uh, no surprise at all. No one should be surprised by that. You've been in the game way too long to not be accurate. Yeah, a hundred percent of the time. So duh. Yeah. yeah. The uh, the other thing is too. Uh, but it was it was on. I think it was the next week, right? You get you went yeah. off. That's true. The very next week it yeah, happened. Next week so you it was... called it right there, man. Yeah, I was like, is this is inevitably going to happen because of the fact that um, the same thing that got his got him, uh, you know, with Pete Davidson, the same thing that got uh, him attracted to her, why he was able to get past the defenses was the thing like he went in the front door and went out the back door doing <laughs> the same shit. It was a little crazy because of the fact that and it's funny because I've debated a couple of guys about this. Yo, it's just, you know. What, what did they say? Somebody said, you know, it's the fame. It's the, you know, it's the, I, and I was like, no, I, I said it was the childish honesty 
that he had, which is so different from what Hollywood is in general. And I've been around, you know, I've done a couple of movies and you go now, and it's good. Do you think it's childish honesty or is it not giving a fuck? Because both of this, those things can fall under the category. His childish it's, honesty could reflect both. the fact that he doesn't give a fuck. Well, I mean, the penis a, is a very insecure dude. So he does give a fuck. But I think, yeah, and to a certain extent, I think that he's his naivete makes it seem like he doesn't give a fuck. Um, the friend of the show, Kurt Metzger, was grew up in Jehovah Witness. Like he was deep, deep Jehovah Witness, and he would uh, he would get girls all the time because of the by accident. He, it was uh, it was accidental honesty. Like the girl would be like, I'm mad at you. I'm leaving. And she would walk and then he would be like, don't ever call me again. And he, he'd be like, all right, well, she told me not to call her. Yeah. So I just <laughs> won't call her. Call her. Not knowing that she was saying, don't ever call me again, just so he could call her again. And the fact when he didn't. He was she was like, you're a bastard. Why? Why? He says, you should never even reach back at me to talk to me. You didn't even care about us. And he was like, but you you he was like, you told me not, not to. I don't like I just didn't call like what? You know, even to the point to you he, like I, 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 I thought you were telling the truth. And and this is how such dishonesty in terms of the game there is. That when somebody is honest, authentic, it slices right through that. <clears throat> yeah, it comes right through. It, you, you read that honesty, it becomes refreshing because most people aren't doing, especially in show business, most people yeah. don't do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you look at it that way, it's like it's the childish exuberance and the naivete, right? It's like yeah. if you, you know, it's. it's <sighs> You can trust a child to tell you the truth. Yeah, even when you don't want, you, even if, even when you don't want to. Exactly, it's like they haven't been corrupted yet. Yeah, in a way, and that definitely helps. I think it's pretty genius what he's doing. I think he's done very well for himself, but you know, there's still some kinks he's got to work out with his game for sure. Well, it's also a situation where I think. Um... Like, I, I really, I don't even think it's like he, he's intentional. I really don't think he's in, just knowing him on a personal level. It's literally he stumbled into, he, I mean, that's how he got on SNL. Like, he wasn't a guy who did sketches or impressions or whatever. He was young and he was funny and he just had this honest na naivete. And they were like, all right, we're going to put you on the television. He was like, he, and he used to say this to me. I, I every day I wonder when I'm gonna get fired. I'm not equipped to do this. I didn't. I didn't go to Second <laughs> City. I never. I wasn't a writer. I was. You know what I mean. So yeah, I think his low self esteem is so low. They Patrice you said that is high. It's high, he, right? He, he just, <laughs> you know, all right, like high. I, I like you. You wanna go? You know what I mean? And then, and he's such a different sort of like an anti hero. Mm. It's why, and he's so different from other people. Now, I, I think he's 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 fucking this new chick now, right? The yeah, I heard. I can't remember her name though. Hold on, let me see what it is. I forget. It's supposedly another hottie. Yeah, of course, it's another hottie, right? Of course, it's not. He's yeah, not gonna date. Said, you know, he's not gonna date a dates... housewife from Oklahoma. Yeah, every Hell day. No. <laughs> Jenny, oh, no. shit, Emily Radajowski. Let me see this. Shit, I wish you could. What is she famous this. for? I have no idea. Let's see. Uh, but that doesn't mean she's not famous. That just um, fame nowadays is just so many people doing Are so you, many you things in it, and out. You got to have what is true. She it's relative. I'm looking it up. I'm looking what she's up. To. I got it first. I got to copy and paste her name into the Google because I'm not spelling that shit. <laughs> Radajowski. Emily, huh? what is it? Radajowski. Some nice pictures pop up. What is she? Uh, she's Polish. Uh, we knew born... the Jowski. Yeah, yeah. Born in London. Parents, blah, 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 blah. What oh, is she? Mm -hmm. uh, she's an actress. She's been in Girl, uh, Gone Girl. She's been in Entourage. Uh, let's yeah. see. I feel pretty. You know, modelly. Very modelly mm -hmm. chick. Right. English I'm actress, 31. Right How old okay. is she? 31. 
Okay. Five seven. Nice, Smoking. beautiful yeah. looking girl. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, just beautiful looking girl. So it's just like he, and as soon as he get dates somebody, somebody sends me a, a notation. Like I don't follow it, but they're like, "Yo, your boy is at it again." Um, <laughs> <laughs> and but it's inter- It's it's also interesting because it, it's so he's so comfortable now. I think this girl was married to somebody. This is this is the part. She was married to somebody who was actually Pete's friend. And now oh, Pete's fucking. Oh, oh no, that's I didn't a know that. Pattern this. now. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Yeah. No one yeah. will ever trust them around their girl again, bro. Yeah. yeah. No one trusts them around their girl now. <laughs> they don't do it. They're like, how are you pulling this off? Oh so, man, he's using the the third wheel tactic. Are you sure he's not doing this on purpose? It just I, looks like there's a system nah. behind it. No, I mean, it's not that, honestly, Jace, it's, I mean, you know, it's like, it's like Donald Trump where you think he's a man and you just realize he's a fucking maniac. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, <laughs> he is crazy. I'll yeah. give you that. So it, it's a situation where he's just, I see what's in front of me only. Uh, there's mm-hmm. no peripheral. I'm not looking up so I get the big picture so that I can see it. It's what's right in front of him. And and so he probably ran in and she was a trash. She probably flirted with him. I well, don't know. I don't like, have any info on this guy. Being, he'd have been uh, like, what are you? What are you? But it, there was a picture. Somebody sent me a picture of him, uh, Pete and him at a Yankee game. Oh, drinking no, beers and hanging out. Oh, man. Oh, shit. They yeah, no, I found buddies. it. I found that picture. God damn. They were bud. Oh, man. Those oh, guys. Wow. That is, I didn't know all that. God, that's, uh, why though? <laughs> you know, Come it's on, similar man. to the situation I just heard of. Yeah. Not too long ago. Um, also in SNL, so I don't know if that means. Oh, okay, yeah, Chris Red. Yeah, the, Chris the, Red the, allegedly, and Allegedly. Uh-huh. I'm saying allegedly, I believe. <laughs> Finally, my legal training has taken course on not takers. <laughs> allegedly, yeah. I believe that he might have got, put the smoke out of him on him from Keenan. Not oh. you're saying that's why he got knocked out in front of the comedy. Oh, cellar? you know he got knocked out, right? He got his. I did. Know, I yeah. Knew, okay. Yeah. So, so I was actually around the corner when it when it happened, but <laughs> it was. But for a dude to get out of a car, wait a minute, Dante, dude, you just implicated yourself into this crime, by the way. Yeah, investigation. Man, yeah, man. See, you're not. You following I was around training. the corner. I was around the corner. I was around the corner, which is in the vicinity <laughs> of the crime area. I was around yeah, the but corner. He didn't see anything, though. He didn't he see have a, he No, I have just saw the, I saw the blood. Well, my alibi was uh, the lovely bouncer, bouncer that passed away. I was hanging oh, out with Steve. him, so I guess I don't have an alibi. Oh, yeah. He mysteriously <laughs> disappears, too. Oh, no. Isn't that coincidental, Dante Nero? <laughs> Isn't that coincidental? I cannot oh, deny. You're, you're a witness. Oh, this is how people suspicious? get looped in. And next Isn't thing you know. Suspicious? <laughs> next thing you know, we're doing a 10-part Netflix documentary about you. Yeah, it's going to be me. Oh, you know, man. How you knocked out Chris Red. Let's get it started. Let's start that rumor. Let's First just get the show some publicity. He, I, I have no doubt in my mind if Dante was the one to do that job, Chris Red would probably still be in the hospital. So I, nah. well, he was jacked. You know, he was jacked up though. Really? Think, yeah. He he he. When he told the story, it was different than what he was like. Yeah, you know, I box, so like I I got hit and I didn't go down, but I you know, and then I like I but it was bleeding in my eye and I couldn't see. So I couldn't see like when you read the story, it's way like I heard he said it was two uh it was two guys with a noose and a MAGA hat. Uh, <laughs> that's what I heard. And I then he said he yet, fought back. Dude. That he fought back. And that was he the most important back. part. <laughs> and then he said he was the gay Tupac. And I thought that was weird. <laughs> oh, it didn't make any sense to me. Oh man, you're killing me. Harry, dude. see if you can bring up the his his account. To the, I All right, I'll pull up the, his account. We're doing a lot of gossip today on yeah, this one. I like this one. I, it's been a while. Not? Why not? But this is why but it, this is relevant. I'll tell you why it's relevant. Because Keenan is a talented dude, right? But yes. Keenan did sketch and everything, right? But he also did Keenan and Cal. So he was accustomed to. So him going to SNL was a, was a reasonable step up, right? Yes. But there's no way you do that. You get it, Harry? You get it? Yeah, I have it. Let's see. I'm going to read, read what Chris says. 
Uh, this man hit me in the face with something metal, Red said in the interview uh, with the Daily Beast. I thought it was brass knuckles because of the way it cut my nose to the bone. The attack outside the, uh, they said the attack outside the famed Comedy Cellar on October 26th as Red was heading inside to uh, perform a show. Uh, the unknown assailant quickly approached the former Saturday Night Live cast member and sucker punched him in the face, then fled the scene. Red, te- this is from Dead- Deadline, by the way. I want to give credit to their thing. Uh, Red tells the Daily Beast uh, that tells the Daily Beast does not think. Oh, this is not written properly. That's a big pet peeve of mine. Sorry, uh, you get paid money to write. You have one job. Red tells exactly. the Daily Beast uh, he does he does not think the incident was an attempted mugging and that he was less concerned about the pain than the amount of blood flowing from his face. At Bellevue Hospital, he was treated for fractures in his nose and cheek. At, you have his his statement. Uh, yeah, it's they're they're peppering it throughout. Uh, a fist don't normally do all that at one time. Red said, so it was safe to assume that it was a hit or something. But the dude just hit me and ran off. I fell down so fast I didn't even know I fell until I looked at the surveillance footage. Red says he immediately wanted to proceed with the show. Um, if we could stop the bleeding, I would have went on stage, and I was like, I can't wait to talk about this shit. He says he was later uh, glad he waited, but that was my first thought, the comic said, uh, about the incident. I don't see anything about the boxing. It might be from a different interview, Dante. Yeah, first of all, yo, he was hurt. First of all, he was Man. in the... You, um, you, he was hurt, so he wasn't thinking about nothing. But in the other one, he was like, yo, I box. It must have been brass knuckles. I don't know. First of all, if he hit you with brass knuckles, you don't know if he hit you with brass knuckles. Exactly. Like, they was like, I boxed, and I, but I just, you know, it was so much blood, I couldn't see. It was like real, like, stop, dude. The dude came, you know, cleaned your clock, and, and I heard it was a big dude, too, but, um, you know, it was. What From it was, to be right? able to knock him down, it probably was a bigger dude, because I know Chris isn't the biggest guy either. Yeah. So Okay, it, so it, my question then would be, do you think that was an alleged hit job by Keenan? Yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> but not <laughs> most. Of that's what. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. Oh, that's wow. Okay. Okay. It's I mean, be, I, wait, I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I don't think that he said that Keenan was like, yo, this motherfucker's fucking my wife. Well, I'm yeah, right. explain this story for people who haven't heard because the two of them were cast okay, members right. on SNL and they were all both on Keenan's show, his sitcom together. And mm-hmm. then I guess Keenan, the time frame is, gets a little murky that Keenan and his wife split. Then Chris Red started dating Keenan's ex wife. Keenan said he had no problem with it. They released a statement, it's not a problem. Then I think the Monday before the season started at SNL, Chris Red uh, leaves. Announces he's not returning to the show, right. even though he was supposed to be returning. I do believe. Yeah, and there was then, tension there. And then yada yada yada, he gets punched in the face. Wow, so, I think so that's it, the timeline. Correct me if I'm missing. Yeah, anything yeah, here. you're right. So what happened? But this is my man. We become friends on the show, and then I put you on a sitcom, and then you slide back and you you smash him up. But now this is this is where it gets it gets where we dig in because the first thing is both them dudes. Is not they with with without being disrespectful. They corny dudes. Yeah, they cor- like them. you. You if you're spending time doing sketch and whatever the fuck, right? Seconds. You're not. It's not like you running. You you don't really have you're that artists. swag. You're artists. I'm not. I'm not that's saying it. you can't have swag, but I'm just saying that's not your concern. So here's dudes who are now in a position because of status, because of money and status. Mm. You have access to a woman that you would never really feel as though you were deserving uh, value, of. valuable or deserving. You know, you didn't, right, deserving of is a great word. Um, and so now you're in it and you date this chick, but then your man is also kind of a cornball. So all of a sudden he goes, instead of go, and don't get me wrong, look, she's attractive. But she's regular smeggler attractive. Yes. She, she was, she's not Pete Davidson. <laughs> no. <laughs> average white girl, dude. Right. Average, like and she's Italian. She, I heard that she's Italian. 
and uh, she's kind of mobbed up too. Like her family's in Ooh. construction okay. and garbage, so that's all. <laughs> oh, oh, but, allegedly. Okay, you know can you throw in a can you pepper allegedly, in some allegedly? Please? Allegedly. <laughs> I'm just so, starting um, to make some money. I'd like to keep it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but here's how I think happened. I think Tina. This in my mind. This is how I see it. Tina's at a bar. So mm. now, because you're rich and because you're famous, you get access to the thugs that wouldn't normally fuck with you. The, with Kanye, is kind of the same thing. Kanye mm. is running from people that I know that know Chicago, know that Kanye is running around with some real killers, right? But you have access right. to that because you you got fame and money. And so it gets you in that club where you wouldn't get in that club. Plus, these motherfuckers are trying to get a payday. So they're going to hang out with you and, and ride your dick and then, you know, and, and fly for free. So Which is the you, worst way to get in because you earn no respect doing that. You know, yeah, but we're talking about street dudes who are going, yo, I'm going to hang out with Kanye. Right. I'm getting paid to hang out with Kanye. <laughs> but so, what I, 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 so I believe that there's always that element when you're famous and you, you know, there's motherfuckers who either that where you came from that you was in that life and then they, they fuck with you or it's people who would never fuck with you. But now because you got money, they fuck with you. So I, I and this is my act out. He's at the bar. Yo, this is bullshit. <laughs> I put this motherfucker on. This was my man. Da, 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 da. Now he's fucking his wife. That's this is some bullshit. And his man goes, yo, you want me to take care of that dog? I would take care of that. And and Keenan go would go, nah, nah, I don't want no trouble. I don't that don't this. Da, 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 da. I got too much to lose. Da, da, da. I'm not asking you to do nothing. He goes, yo, I'm not asking you if you asking me. I'm just saying. If it happens. By accident, it happens. And I'll <laughs> holler at you. You know what I mean? So and I, and Keenan was like, look, man, I don't want no I I believe Keenan would go, I don't want I don't need the trouble. I got too much to lose. So his man's who got nothing to lose goes and sets it up, bong, right? And then Keenan gotta come back. He now Keenan gonna have to pay for something whether or not he wanted it or not. Mm. Yo, you said. This is your man. He fucked you over. I'm looking out for you. So maybe if he says, if you don't, I ain't caught. It's, you know, it's it's already gotten stale. You know, after the first 48, the, the first 48 is it's going dead. You know, it, the case goes cold. And so what ultimately happens? He goes to see Keenan. Yo, let hit me with a couple stacks. Well, what, what do you mean? For what? I didn't ask you to do that. Yo, but I did it. And da, da, da. So he bunk bunk. So it's, I believe it was an unintentional, intentional mm -hmm. joint. Because you know he, he and he probably even said, "Don't do that." Yeah, it, so, it was probably extortion on some level. Yeah, yeah. yes. So he Ooh. comes back and goes, "Yo, I, I took care of that thing for you." And Keenan be like, "What thing? Mm -hmm. Come on, son. You know what? You know what we talking about? Oh boy. So let's, and let's I talk don't about they, though. Let's huh? talk a little bit about the lack of bro code here." Or, but this yeah. is what Thank I'm you. saying. Let's get when into you're, that. When you are cornball um, and you're not, and you're not accustomed to that, it, when you're not accustomed to having these options, you excited and you're willing to to you're willing to sell your friends out because of it for access. And so, it almost, you know what? It's almost a sick human nature thing that it, it accrues more value because you're taking somebody's wife. Right. Because you go, man, I'm I'm so like I'm so it. I'm such a big fucking just, deal. Hide your wives. Somebody's wife. When, hide you your could, wives. when you should be going. I could get anybody else. What am I doing? There's an abundance of women. There's the an world abundance. will never run out. My, my man, uh, me and Harry was out one time and uh, one of my one of my old dudes came out. Right. And this dude was heckling and. Right. So I get on the stage and right away I jump in this motherfucker's neck and then he goes, he goes, uh, yeah, you all oh, you wanna you wanna come outside. I don't know what he said, how he like you wanna come outside side or something. And I said, Yo, I yes. I'm, I, I, <laughs> Probably absolutely almost definitely. <laughs> and uh so Harry's there, so Harry's like, Oh god, here. Yeah. 
Here we go. He gives his glasses. Just girl, look. Man, they have a wallet, the car. wristwatch. So my man is there with, with his check, right? Smoking hot shit. Just mm. but and and we boys, and he's 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 got swagger. But I was just I went in and I the dude the dude backed down. Nobody Harry didn't have to send his girl to the car, and we it didn't happen. But they also know Harry and my my old dude, they know. That if I say yes, I want to come. You're it's, going outside. That's, it's You're the same outside. thing as anything else. Credibility. Mm. If I say I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Otherwise, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna do it. So if I he goes, you want to go outside, and I go, yes, I'm coming, and he better stop me because if he doesn't cop out, it's happening whether I want it to happen or not. Now I've definitely gotten older. Where I limit my, where I, I'm easy, let I'll let it ride off my back. It's not worth it because I have too much to lose. But if I say, yeah, let's get this, then it's getting that. Harry knows that. Everybody who knows me, because there's a, there's a congruency in that truth. I'm 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 I'm, I'm have, living this. You life. have gone outside. Yeah, oh, yeah you I, have I, I gone outside, outside on many occasions. <laughs> you go out there. You don't need no umbrella, nothing. And and Harry's not going. Oh, you know, it's, it'll work out. No, Harry's going. Harry is going. Yo, take it's going. This this is going down. So if this going is down. going down, at least I'll watch his back to see if anyone else gets exactly. involved. Exactly. And That's my man my was there. Yeah, and nothing. But I, I didn't off. think anything. Would, I go. I think you could handle it. I'm not worried yeah, you can't handle right, it. But right, right. But it's also if I could save you a couple stitches, that'll help. Well, out. Even my boy kind of was like, and I've known him. 30 years. He's like, oh, like he's going back to when we was <laughs> 20, 19 and 20. And this was going down. He's like, hey, um, like, what the fuck? But here's the crazy thing. As we came out and we were talking about it, because I'll do that. And then I'll flip it. Hey, how's everybody doing? You know, it because I wasn't. Yeah, it's, it's a switch. It wasn't. I wasn't angry. I wasn't out of control. It was necessary for the situation. And his like. He introduced me to his girl, and his girl shook my hand and and held on to it. She gave that lingering Ooh. touch, looked me, beamed me, big, pretty, light brown eyes, beamed me right in the eyes, and I was like, Phew. but the the idea of me being dominant male mm. just then then it overwhelmed like, her. Yeah, and then as quick as I the dude kicked out, I hit him with a joke, spun it around, and then murdered. Like I like murdered the show. I had the the, the audience was screaming, get the fuck out. They even two of the two of the dudes was ready to fuck him up. That's which is I forgot that part. That's why now when I, they were ready to everybody was on my side and then, then I killed it. And then I I meet his girl and it's a... Uh, you know, I, I said, oh, it's good meeting you. I go to hug her. The hug is a little, just a second or two longer than it should have been. And I was and her like, hands wrap around you a little too oh, much. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> titty, titty meat squeeze in the chest. Titty, Ooh, long. right? Nice. Little titty meat squeeze, not no air little, in between. Little you know? McGuffey press, what no I call a McGuffey no side boob, hug. Little, no Christian. Little, little, yeah. No, this was full front McGuffey press. Yeah. We was Ooh. making paninis. We was making titty paninis. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I was like, man, I got to let me stay away from this shit yeah. right away. I mean, you can't is... blame her for that, but it, it I mean, obviously, it, you it have is what it is. in the moment. Right. But he also doesn't have to act on it because why fuck over his friend? Because what is he just find another girl? And you that's know, the thing on the from, Yeah, right. Back where I'm from, we have a saying and I, I can't speak this particular language from this tribe mm -hmm. too fluently. But rough translation is like. You can't be surprised when you leave your hot meal in front of a hungry man right? If you alone and then come back and notice the plate is gone, yeah, right? Yeah. You can't, you don't have the right to be surprised yeah. by that. You, know you don't it. leave good food in front of hungry people. Right. And I think with that Chris Red, Kenan Thompson thing, it kind of is the same thing. When yeah. you roll with dudes that have a scarcity about them, yeah. surprise, surprise, they're going to act on it. Nine times yeah. out of ten. Yeah. Because they don't have these options. And so, and don't get me wrong, take, like we though? said, 
What is it? They have the options, though, Dante. That's the thing no, I think but where they we're don't different. Be, but no, they don't they believe. Don't. That's a big they don't believe. That's different. Okay, true, true, true. They have That's the options. The yes, the the, fi- the the framing, the financial framing, and the the social the sociological framing gives them options, but they don't think that they have those options because it don't matter how much. Dog, I just watched Chris Helmsley. Is it Chris Helmsley's Thor? Yes, uh, he's Chris doing Hemsworth. that new series. Chris Hel- yeah. Hel- Hel- Hemsworth. Yeah, it's Hemsworth. called Limitless. Right, Limitless. I'm started watching that on Disney Plus. I think it is. Dog. He is a he is probably the the the, the sex symbol of our time, right? Thor, yeah. right? For well, him yeah. and maybe the Rock, but it's weird how they don't they don't see Rock the Rock as a sexual being, and it, that's it's a weird thing too. He was with people's him. sexiest man alive. Yeah, but he's a, he's not he's not the like the I want to fuck the Rock. Like it's almost mm. they like looking at him. They want to fuck Jason Momoa. They want to fuck Chris Helmsley. They want to fuck Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, they want to fuck Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. So it's you're not, not saying it's a race thing. You're just saying it's the Rock. No, no, I'm saying he doesn't just doesn't have the sex. He the Rock is just not sexy like that. Like he's kind of goofy. He might, maybe he's too nice and fun and goofy. Yeah, you're right. Where he's like, I think well, it's the I niceness see, too. The niceness yeah, too. I also see. I saw him in. Um, what was the Fast and the Furious? No, the Hobbs the, and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw, and he does a kiss with the girl in that movie, and when he kisses her, you're like, that might have been the most awkward thing I ever seen in my <laughs> like. It was so. If you get a chance, I can't even imagine it right now. Right. This is. You see what I'm saying? How undersexualized right. he is, and even when he has a wife or something, he's the dad, but it's almost sexless in a way. You know what I mean? But it, he kisses. Show, uh, I can see that about John Cena too. John Cena's not super. Yes, yeah, not a sexual. Fuck it's him. A goofy I think what happens of- is those guys get very goofy because they're so big, so mm. they're trying to like do the opposite where they're well, like, "Watch yourself, there, punk." Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, but I do see your point though. They're trying to yeah, it's not a sex how appeal. intimidating they are, right? It's, They're trying it's to just, counterbalance that. It's attractive. It's it's damn. I can't think of uh pretty like a pretty and sexy like um trying to think who I think is really pretty uh. I think I know exactly what you mean. There's some people that are attractive, but without any sex appeal. Yes. Right? So like, aesthetically um, attractive, but you're not sexually. And yes. beautiful. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. I feel that way about Ariana Grande. I think she's a very pretty girl, but I don't want to be with You know her. what? I Yes. Fair enough. Yeah, yes. I see that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I Megan, refuse to get involved Megan until Fox. I figure out until I find out officially what her race is. That's where I stand with her. <laughs> well, because I feel like <laughs> she's that, man. <laughs> I feel like she exudes that she's Puerto Rican. But you don't but feel legally that. I haven't seen any documentation that, no, that lets you know. Her last name is Grande. Yeah. Right, but Which apparently is it might Spanish, be Spanish, right? It, Maybe she's a no, size. It queen. might be Italian. Oh, size queen. It's Italian. Okay, yeah, not not yeah. Spanish. Italian. No, Grande is no, Spanish. I mean, it's right? both. I think. Let's see where it comes from. Because Grande. Well, maybe you're right. I know it is Spanish. Spanish no, it is in Spanish, but I want to know. Maybe it comes from something else. I don't know, but anyway. And she's right. Spanish, but but she's a perfect example of that. Like, not se- absolutely. She's not sexy at all to me. She's very Taylor, pretty. She's Taylor like Swift, a which I'm, I don't even really. Yeah, Taylor Swift is. I don't even really find her. I mean, yeah, not, I was getting ready to say. I don't. Yeah, it's like whatever. So, to like, be completely honest, I would be a hypocrite to say that because I have dated so many skinny, tall <laughs> white girls. Yeah, but so, but not her. Not her. I, no, she I, doesn't use. I tell you who I would fuck in a minute is um Iggy Azalea. I, I would do yes, this, but I give you one better. What's the the wrecking ball chick? Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. Yeah, she. You're very right. She could get it. She, you know, like, she, she looks she like has a good time. A, 
she has a dirty energy. She's in right. It. Yes, exactly. She has that I feel Madonna like the whore thing, but more the Madonna whore, not the Madonna yes. part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, she but just... you, she feels like she'd be fun as opposed to like Ariana yeah. Grande would like, like not want like, you to smear her makeup. I, 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 my voice right. hurts. You you're know, like, like, uh, <laughs> but, you can't choke me. No, my yeah, voice. Like, <laughs> well, then what the fuck are we even doing here? <laughs> but you, when you, and it's it's funny, but when you look at Jason Momoa or Chris Helmsley. That Helmsworth. it's that they Helmsworth 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 right, yeah right. Helmsworth Hemsworth. Helmsworth Helmsley uh, Hunter Sherman you're thinking of Triple H Hunter Hearst I was Helmsley. thinking about uh, the Sherman Jeffersons <laughs> <laughs> I mean you know women gotta want to fuck Sherman Helmsley <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this he had a swag he did have a swag yeah he did have a swag but he probably I, was I, fucking I, a lot of, during the during the Jeffersons man son, he was killing it. Are you kidding me? How much Jefferson pussy was he getting? <laughs> Jefferson's pussy? I know he fu- He must have fucked Valona and and uh, Valona and uh, uh, oh, I don't know the other one's name. JJ's sister. What was it? Oh, I don't remember her name. From you say he times? made it through the entire uh, Norman he, Lear cast? He fucked, he fucked Laverne and Shirley. Both of them in a threesome. And Maud. And Maud. And Maud. Fuck Maud, too. He got Maud. <laughs> These are dated references. You got to go Angie, back to it. Police woman, he fucked her. He, for Angie Dickinson, and also uh, Edith Bunker. He he, she, he, he, he raw dogged Edith Bunker. She, now she gave him some neck. Edith Bunker gave him some neck. Oh, you got to um, watch, watch uh, Nick at Night, everybody, to get these references. We need to watch some more current shows. He, I'm for what I understand, he even he even he even fucked Nell Carter. Oh, so Jesus. big Nell Carter. Um. Anyway, the. But it, I'm watching. He's got this show called Limitless, and it's where he's trying to. He's under stress, and so he's challenging himself so that he can figure out how to manage the stress because the stress becomes such a killer and this and that and the other. And in like, doing blah, blah. so, he's teaching everybody else how to manage stress. So he has a thing where he has to. They tie him. They bound his ankles and his arms and throw him in a pool, and he's got to wade with his. And then he has to go down and pick up a mask with his mouth and then swim to the top right and panic in. And then she then he has to walk on a crane 900 yards up into this. Just walk on the crane. I mean, he's got a safety rope and everything. You know, it's the insurance scary. for that. But my point is, he's dealing with this stress and then he has a, 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 a checking his heart rate and everything while in real time. But here's a guy. Top of the world. Twenty million dollars for the for a fucking mess. Like literally a neurotic mech. Like I'm afraid that uh he starts. You know he's in therapy. And he's I'm afraid that all of this, everything that I've earned, I, I didn't grow up with a lot of money. I'm afraid that they'll take it away from me tomorrow when I don't learn my lines. I feel like I I, I got to do it right the first time because they'll get somebody else to do. But just in constant anxiety the whole time. When you look at this guy, physically fit, good looking guy, handsome, world by the balls, and still. Will Smith in it, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Like, I, 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 have you seen the last movie he did, the last Thor movie, Love and Thunder? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Dude, literally looks like they ripped him out of a comic book. Like, I am impressed mm. yeah. with the amount of work he must have had to do to get in shape like that. But yeah, he's not matching his own energy, dude. It's right. so weird to see. But they, well, but that because, broken listen, thing is attractive should... to women, you know. It happens to be a genetic situation. He's got hard work. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure he works hard. Yeah. But part of it is genetic size, everything else. But it doesn't necessarily prepare you mentally for the other things, especially if you get dragged when you're young and you don't yeah. have time to grow mentally. You're in show business. Show business right. is a fucked up world of liars and cheaters and people who mm. yes you all the way to death, you know, and you don't know who. Yeah, to yeah he was like and... a model from when he was like a teenager or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So even well, he more just so. they just announced, I think, today that he's stepping away from uh He's stepping away from acting because he has a genetic defect that gives him MS. Or oh, Alzheimer's, uh, I thought. That he was, really? Yes, it is Alzheimer's. A predisposition yeah. to Alzheimer's. Yeah, predis- I don't know. But what, a, a yeah. high, he is like 15 more times likely to have oh, to get uh, Alzheimer's. That's so sad. Like, that's his bread and butter right there is movies. Yeah. You need to memorize yeah. stuff to be good at but that. But he's got enough money that he could they could live forever now with, you know, with the ball. And even if he worked these last few Marvel, whatever it is, he'll, he'll never need no more. But the point is, my point is, look at all that he has and look at how he's such a mess. Like, you really mm. feel. 
And 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 yes, dude, the dude part of what they you know they did the uh, Wim Hof method where he does the ice baths. And I shit. love Wim Hof. At one point, I'm gonna work with him. I swear to God, I love that guy. He did a he did ice surfing in the winter in Australia, like snow on the beach and ice surfing in a wetsuit. He can surf too because he surfed his whole life. Dope, but just a fucking mess. Like mm. literally everything mentally up. And you you look at this guy, he's got the world. And so this is what's interesting about how guys and clients you have and guy clients, you, they think that this is unattainable, but they don't mm. even understand that the people that they're looking up to, that they're jealous of or that they're envious of are fucking messes. They, and we Nobody's found out, perfect. Everybody but, has something but that even makes them a that, mess. Let's be, let's be honest. I, I, we've looked at comic friends of ours, sure. ours who are who are exceedingly famous and is a mentally a fucking wreck. Selling marrying some right woman now, that tonight. doesn't. Yeah. Marrying a woman that they don't that they don't get along with already, and then she wants a bigger place. So. He got to get a bigger place. He don't want to be home in the little place, much less pay double for a new place because she thinks it's bigger. The he, a comic friend of mine, his girl, his girls that started doing comedy. She don't. He marries her. That she, now he's got to act like, and he's a great comic, but he's got to act like her comedy is valid because she just started to do it. She just took a stab at it and and the start. Insane, ridiculous, like just Man. an insult to the years and years of training he's had. <sighs> ridiculous. He, okay, and, so let and, me ask you something. Legally, take, gets married to that. Oh man, let let me ask you something though. Mm -hmm. uh, let Let's take the Chris Hemsworth situation as an example, because you know we both we we both work with a lot of guys. If you had the opportunity to get in front of Chris Hemsworth yeah. and like help him, like coach yeah. the guy. Okay. How would you go about doing that? Um, first of all, I, I think the I, I always try to create a cognitive barrier or cognitive road from what the fear is to what the fear is not. Mm. So in essence, um, his concern is his him losing his career, him not being act, you're not being able to act and know. Uh, so the first thing we have to understand, the reason why somebody like him gets to where he gets is because he's worked. And so it's not like he doesn't know how to work. He knows how to get there. And, and I would ask him that. I would you, you do understand the reason why you are where you are is because of hard work, right? And when the opportunities came, you gave it your all and you've always come up with success. And just about in every success, every endeavor that you want, you mm. I watch you surf. You're an amazing surfer. You you're lean. You stay lean. You, even the show that he's doing is progressive. So he's trying to find a way to get better. What makes you think that that is not your character? Like you exhibit these these these. He's a dude who is exhibiting not only that, but you have the receipts for it mm. extensive movie career he's a hot sim symbol uh sex symbol two kids beautiful wife beautiful home 20 million dollars of film first of all if you're worrying about money you i would first thing i would say look you just you made 20 million on the last film right so if you made 20 million on the last film even if it was that we, you have a financial advisor so you're not gonna go broke so if you don't do another movie your family and you are good I get that you want them to have more and you can do that, but let's start at a baseline. The fear is it's like when I tell dudes to lay the five bricks and to start to, to be socialized, their scenario of what is going to happen is that they're going to get cussed out or that a girl mm. is going to screw. They worst case scenario, worst case scenario. And yeah. So the first thing I say when I reevaluate them after a week or week and a half or two weeks is I go, what happened? Well, and they go, well, you know, I mean, a lot of girls smiled and the one girl this and one girl that. And I go, did you get any bad situations? And they go, well, there's a couple of girls that just didn't respond. And I go, and why do you think that is? And they go, I don't know. I don't know. I go, 
I, could could their mother, could their grandmother had died earlier that day? Yeah. Could their dog have died? Could they have been have a friend in the hospital? Could they have just found? There's a list of things that could happen that have the reason why she didn't respond wasn't you, and you can't take that personally. And and what we want to do is we we the ego shoots up and again I say never let it have emotion have a seat at the table. You're 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 going. You're allowing the, your ego is emotion. Your ego is saying, um, I'm not capable of this if I don't have this. But the reality of it is success. You have a series of successes. You've made more money than you could already spend. If you mm. manage, if you get a financial manager, you don't ever have to work again. Your children. So the thing that you're most afraid of is it. that's not going to happen. And, and none of them. And then. When they're going through the process, I've had guys fall into pussy. Oh, I got laid. True. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, like uh, it actually happens a lot more often than people yeah. realize. But once you just start taking some kind of action, any kind yeah. of action, even yeah. if it's not the most productive or intelligent or it's even right. counterintuitive, some way, somehow, the universe something finds else will a way happen. to bring something to you. Right. Yeah. Just kind of fall into it. It's crazy, yeah. but it's it's really dope when you see that. We had a a dude on the show. We had uh, who was it? Jacob? It was Jacob. Jacob right? So Jacob, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from Wildin' Out. Really kind of timid, laid back dude. Jacob Voices. Williams. <laughs> yeah, Jacob. He came on, and I the first time he came on, and he he kind of talks. He talks like this, and then you know I've been doing um, It's like my. And he was saying how he and I said, look, you know what I'm going to do? I said, I'm going to help you. And then you're going to come back on and we're going to talk we, so we could chronicle your process, your progress. And so the first thing he did when he, we, we had him back on and he went through the first phase of what my program is. And he was like, yeah, it was so different. It was, you know, and people were smiling and women were responding. And it was so it felt so good. He goes, you know, there were two girls who just didn't respond. And and I say the same thing again. You don't know what's in that person's head. You can't. If the only thing is you, you think that everybody if the world doesn't revolve, revolve around you. This woman has a life. She doesn't know you. And just because she didn't respond in the way that you were accustomed to, doesn't mean she didn't like you. It just could be something totally. So let's assume that it was something else instead of assuming what it is. And then he, I, and then he goes. He's talking. He's talking. And he goes, "Yeah." And then um, I got laid twice. Wait, hold the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a situation where you can't even talk to women, and and you got two pieces of ass in the course of just randomly from strangers. Simply because you follow, because what happens is the minute the focus stops being on, what am I going to lose? Right. Instead of that, I'm in my space. I'm in my body, in my space, doing what I do, showing that I have autonomy from what goes on around me. It instantly puts me in a situation where I'm more attractive. The first thing it does, it, it allows me to to exude what my personality is, which is kind and 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 generous and loyal and all of those things. He's also timid, which means he doesn't want to step on nobody's toes, so he doesn't take up space. It's like even when I look at you sitting up in the in the way you're sitting, is you take it, it's about claiming space because the subtext of that is. And, and that's not something you think about. That's no. just it, it. It has become that with time, where you take up space. Um, and I've said that to dudes, man. You 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 sh you're shrinking, like you you're shrinking. You 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 got to take up the space like you deserve to be there. You know, and it's hard. It's hard. I mean, the way I, I mean, the way I usually uh, communicate it to my people, to my students, is like just the ability to be comfortable with taking risks often, you know, because a lot sure. of people stifle themselves by thinking too much about what the consequences would be and how things could go wrong. And I'm, I'm just like, listen, you need to start playing to win. Yeah. You need to stop being worried about what could go wrong and start motivating yourself with the rewards. What could yeah. go right? All the Man. amazing experiences you could have and all the beautiful people you can meet. 
just start taking risks. Yeah. I also find that sometimes when you when you're trying to get somebody to that point, acknowledging it to what to it even being a thought process for them. Some guys you can't reach because they're so like in their head anyway. And so what I do is I give you a specific objective. I need you to go from A to B. I don't need you to go. I don't straight line. This is what I need you to do. And this is what the response is going to be. So they, they don't have to think they don't have to figure it out. They don't have to adjust. This is, they will. Well, what if I get, what if I don't get the number? I don't want you to get the number. A lot of my students are going to watch what you just said and laugh their ass off because yeah. that is like the basis of what I yeah. say. Do yeah. not worry about uh, a, a certain goal or a result. Just go and do this action. The success is in doing the action doing over the action. and over again. Yeah. Just go up to girls you find attractive. Say hi. Tell her yeah. she looks like she should buy you a drink. Try that. Yeah. Right. And then just, you know she'll laugh, whatever. So I'm just messing with you. Nice to meet yeah. you. Bounce next girl. Right, right. You you, but I find breaking it down into those little small increments where they don't. All I gotta do is say hi. That's it. All I gotta do is that's say hi. it. Yeah. And they go. Yeah. That's all. In fact, that's all I want you to do. You mean what? Well, what happens if? I don't want you to get the number. I don't want you to ask for the number. I don't want you to go on a date. I don't want you to do anything. I, I just, and so then when they come back, they go, uh, well, I go, did you do the time? Did you, did you do what I told you to do? Yes. Did you do the amount that I told you? They go, yes. I go a plus. So oh, now man. we're building, we're building. Well, I, I, there was this one situation. I, yeah, but I didn't ask you to do that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even give you the, 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 I didn't even give you the code for that yet. So if you, the fact that you could, I'm, I'm blessed that you did. That's not, you already got the A plus. Now we go. And, and then I think you can start to explain the transformation once they feel the transformation. Cause they don't know. They just know it's different. But if you try to explain it, sometimes what will happen is they get caught up in the minutia of it. And then, then the questions and then the unknown becomes fear. And then they can't even execute the, the, uh, the, the simple, simple action, task. Right. Yeah. yeah. The A to B that's it. Well, what if, what if C comes? I didn't ask that. Don't worry I about just, C. Just do A to B. Yeah. And part to whole. And you teach them part to whole. And in the process of that, you go, I mean, it, it, it's a weird thing. I, I, you know, it, the, the same technique works. Like I, a lot of times I'll be, I'll do, I'll even counsel people sometimes, you know, with their grief, you know, they lose a parent or they lose a kid mm. or whatever, whatever. And, call, and I go, you, you, we are all going to die. We're all going to die. And if that, it, you know, like I, when I lost my mother, I lost my mother. She was 80. If she was 180, it still wouldn't have been no better. The the fact is that we're caught up in the in the the, the selfishness of wanting what we want, and when more. it's when it's and and it's going to stop anyway. Why don't you plug your stuff? Let's go to the Patreon. We're gonna go behind the scenes. Talk to me, Jace. Well, you know you can always find me on uh, TikTok, Jace the Pickup Scientist, same as YouTube and on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Harry, uh, you can find my stuff as well on TikTok. I don't have as big a following as Jace. My goodness, um, but <laughs> I'm making a little impact there. Definitely some good stuff going on at TikTok. All my social media, and I also do consultations. Uh, you can reach out to me at uh, advicefromharry at gmail dot com. Um, oh, yeah, also, if you want a consultation with me, uh, DanteNero dot com. Click on consult. You can get me GYBB. Get your balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. We'll see you on the on the uh, the Patreon side. Peace.